don't move the lettuce. Hello, Leho. This is Virginia, Virginia Chan from Human with a Chance of Fish Bowls. And today it is winter solstice in Hong Kong. Actually, winter solstice is the same everywhere in the world, but it is particularly important in Hong Kong. So I thought I could take you to let you know what happens in Hong Kong during winter solstice. So let's go. First thing, what is winter solstice? Winter solstice occurs when one of the Earth's poles has its maximum tilt away from the sun. So actually in layman terms, it just means that it's the shortest day of the year, day in terms of daylight. In Chinese, there's a saying called Dong Da Go Lin. It means that winter solstice is even bigger than Chinese New Year's itself. And I was like, huh, why? And the funny thing is, I asked Rumi, and then I asked my grandma, and everybody knows that you have to celebrate winter solstice in Hong Kong, but I feel like the purpose is a little bit more like, I feel like everybody just knows they have to do it, but the reason why is a little bit less known. But we were looking into it, and it's because technically it's kind of like the start of the new year, so because it is the shortest day of the year, so every day thereafter, therefore, is going to be longer than this day, so therefore it's kind of like the new year. So that's why we celebrate it. So I think the three biggest holidays in Hong Kong are going to be Chinese New Year's, Mid-Autumn Festival, and then Winter Solstice. And I think if you compare it with where I'm from, Canada, I think our three biggest holidays over in Canada would be Christmas, Thanksgiving, and maybe New Year's. So in Hong Kong, Winter Solstice is a really big deal. However, it is actually not a holiday. So it occurs on December 21st or 22nd, and depending on the year, and it's actually not a holiday, meaning that you actually have to go to work on the day of, and you don't get a day off the next day. So what's usually the norm is that you get off two hours earlier than your designated work end day. So in Hong Kong, usually that's 6 p.m. So we get off at 4 p.m. If you work at a more local company, they will let you off about half day, midday. So you eat lunch and then you get to leave. And the reason why is because you have to have to come together with your family to eat this really bountiful meal. This bountiful meal is very, very similar or equivalent to the Chinese New Year's meal. So if you're interested to see what that looks like, then I will link you to my Chinese New Year's dinner video that we made a Chinese New Year's uh, dinner and you can see how that looks. So why they let us off two hours early is a couple of reasons. One, if you're making the meal, then you have to have enough time to go to the wet market or to the grocery market to buy everything, to prepare everything for this meal. And two, if you are joining the dinner, then usually you go to your parents' house or your grandparents' house and they tend to not live in the very urban areas. They tend to live in the further outskirts of Hong Kong. So in the new territories is where my grandparents live. And so I would have to commute for like an hour to get back to Yunlong. So that's why they give you the head start, so to speak. So what do you have to do during winter solstice? There's actually really, um, if there's anything different, let me know. But I only really know of two things. One, you have to eat this bountiful dinner. And then two, you have to eat tong yun. Tong yun are glutinous rice dumplings. And basically it's the same thing as mid-autumn and Chinese New Year's, you have to eat the tong yun. Tong yun sounds like reunion, which is tun yun. And that just means that um, they wanna make sure that every year you can have the family wholesome and entire and to make sure that everybody's safe and that you can all get together to eat this meal again year after year. And that's why you eat it, because it sounds good and there's good luck. Generally speaking, the tong yun, so you'll have eight because eight is the luck Lucky number eight, but sounds like wealth and prosperity, which is fat, bot and fat. So therefore you would have eight ones in your bowl. Uh, when I was at my grandparents' house, we used to have like maybe like two each or three each because we can't eat all eight. Um, and in the soup base, we would make it with ginger because ginger is supposed to have these medicinal properties. It's supposed to take wind away from you. So it's during the winter time. So it's supposed to like just heal you from within or it's supposed to warm you up from within. It's like a warm hug. So that's why we have it with a ginger soup. Right, so this dinner that I talk about that you have to eat, once again, it's just really bountiful to represent that you have enough food for the next year. And then also the wet markets will close a little bit earlier as well. And if you are going to buy a chicken, you have to reserve ahead of time. So in Hong Kong, you do get live chickens. So people like to steam a chicken. You do have to reserve your chicken ahead of time or else it'll most likely be sold out. 
And then I have a section on urban variations, meaning that yes, we still eat that bountiful meal, but some people, they might actually do this meal with the extended family on the weekend before um, winter solstice. So it's just easier and a little bit more convenient and less stressful for everybody on that day off. Another thing is previously before someone cooked the meal, but obviously it's very stressful for that person to cook the entire meal for like 10 people or so. So as a convenience, um, we might actually eat this meal at a restaurant instead. And of course, 2020 is particularly special in Hong Kong. There are no dine-in restaurant services past 6 p.m. So we are all eating it at home. For this particular year, I'm not eating it with my grandma and I'm not eating it with Rumi or auntie. So I'm doing it with a couple of friends this year and since none of us can cook that traditional meal that I speak of a lot, uh, what we've decided to do is hot pot instead. It kind of seems like it would be the right thing to do. Initially, I was gonna go fancy and traditional and just make everything from scratch, like all of the soup bases, and then I got lazy. So today, we're just gonna do it easy. So we're gonna use instant soup broths and and yeah, that's about it. I would show you the process, except I have a couple of other friends uh, eating this meal and they're kind of camera shy. So I'll just leave it here. I'll take some panning shots, but I'll show you some shots of me battling it out at the supermarket, at the wet market, at Donkey with everybody else. And then I'll show you the dessert afterwards as well. So that's about it on my winter solstice in Hong Kong. Okay, it's 4.20 and I'm really scared that the wet market's gonna be closed. So we're gonna go to the wet market first before we go to the supermarket. Oh, he told me about way too much. Okay. Oh. Then what I'm gonna do is go to Donkey and get some beef for the hot pot. Um, Arrived at the meats, but it looks like everything's all gone. Oh no. And then I keep poking people with my solstice. Rumi said that a hot pot isn't popular for winter solstice. I think that's wrong because all the hot pot beef has been swiped. And there's only like the ones for grilling and nobody wants that, so. Ugh. <laughs> Always bring enough cash or else you'll be like me. The beef was a hundred. I only had ten more dollars. So she was very nice and she picked out all the fish bowls I could. I think she even gave me some extra because I only had ten dollars for the bowls. Okay, we're done. And because I ran out of cash, so we're at the supermarket so I could pay with a credit card. This is the one that Rumi really likes. This is the one that we always have. But obviously it is um, sold out. So I was thinking, actually, let's try this weird one. This is from the bubble tea place, and it's a black sugar, uh, tiger sugar, black sugar sesame rice bowl. So I think I'm gonna do this instead. And then I'm gonna get cash back, so I'll have some cash. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Just, um, the line is horrendous though, so yeah. We'll just have to wait in that line for a good while. One eternity later. No, but hot pot etiquette, or if you don't know how to hot pot, we usually like to hot pot the beef first, and then I usually do vegetables at the end. However, apparently that's completely, completely wrong by a dietitian because by the time you do the vegetables, it's like in an oily broth. So you're supposed to eat the vegetables first, but that sounds very, very sad. So normal people will eat the beef first, and we will put in the things that take a while to cook like the dumplings and the fish balls in with the corn at the beginning so halfway through you'll be able to eat it in time and then as we're waiting for that to cook then we'll do the beef and then a little bit later towards the end is when we do the carbs like the fancy the glass noodles and then the udon and then i generally do vegetable glass which apparently is terrible but you do you you do whatever you want 
Okay, I'm with the time lapse. This is our sauce platter. Chili, cilantro, garlic. Oh my God, and look what I did. So spring onion, I even separated them between the green and then the white. I went all out for this, yo. Beef, sauce, sauce stuff, saute, clear broth, tofu, lettuce, bean curd, udon, glass noodles, veggies. Bon appetit! Here is the ending of the night, which is the tong yun, which are the glutinous rice dumplings. They are usually white. I repeat, they're usually white, but it's because I bought the black sugar kind. So they look humongo. Look at this. So I'm only eating two, not eight. So yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to comment, subscribe, and like. And I'll see you in the next one. Dag in! The time lapse is waiting for you to give me a garbage can, garbage bag, garbage bag. Don't move the lettuce.